In this topic, we're going to talk about text and text entry and share with you several different ways that you can save some time in text and text entry. So, what I'll do is start off with my first topic, which has to do with adding a line of text. So as you see here, I'm just going to double click on my text with my regular pointer and move my cursor to the end of my first line of text. Add another line of text which says line 2. two. And then I'm going to go to Composer. And you see that the dilemma is that line 2 went directly on top of line 3. There's a quick and easy way to deal with this situation. And that is to click on Reset All Line Spacing here in the Text Entry dialog box. Now when I click on Composer, you'll see that line 2 and line 3 are spaced out quite nicely. I'm just going to undo that and undo that just so I'm back to the beginning. And I'm going to show a similar way that you can do this with text on the work surface as well. So text on the work surface is this tool over here. You fly out your text tool and it's your first text tool that's available. And I'm going to put my cursor here at the end of this first line. Press enter and type in line 2. And again you notice that the same thing happens. In this case I'm going to, the, going to go to the text menu and then click on Reset Line Spacing. And you notice that it adds in the spacing between my second line and my third line. If I'm in text on the work surface again, I'll put my cursor in the middle of this first line. You can also hold down the control key and press enter and that will also automatically add the space for your additional line between the previous lines of text. So now I can just type it right in and everything is nice. Another thing that I'd like to show is kerning. Kerning is basically spacing between any two character pairs. So as you look at this, you might say to yourselves, well, the K and the E, they look to be a little bit too close together. I wish I could just spread out those two character pairs just to give it a little more breathing room. So you can do that also very quickly and easily through both text on the work surface as well as using text in the dialog box. So using text on the work surface, I can click on my text on the work surface tool and put my, my text on the work surface cursor between the K and the E. And then I'm going to use my kerning characters. The kerning characters are the less than symbol and the greater than symbol on the keyboard or shift plus comma and shift plus period. So to add a little more space between the K and the E, I'm going to hold down my shift key and press the period and you notice that it's adding in a little bit of space between my K and my E. If I want to go over here and just as an example I'll do the same thing between the N and the G except I'll reduce the spacing. So in this case I'm using the less than uh, key on the keyboard and you notice that every time I press the key it reduces the spacing by just a little bit between that character pair. Another way that you can do kerning is to double click on your text with your regular pointer and go into the text entry dialog box. So here you see that the, the uh, greater than and less than symbols that I used in text on the work surface are also shown in this dialog box. So you can do basically the same thing here. So between the R and the N I'll do three minus kerns or negative kerns, one, two, three, or three less than signs. And you notice again that my spacing has tightened up. And then finally, in the text entry dialog box, I'll just double click on my text with my regular pointer. Between the N and the I, I'll do five greater than currents. One, two, three, four, five. And you notice that the N and the I are pushed apart. So that's kerning for text. Another feature that we have, which is primarily designed for the Gerber Edge, is a feature which is called small text. Small text is the use of Windows TrueType or OpenType fonts for text entry when you're going to be creating a small graphic or some small text for printing to your Gerber Edge. And this can be an Edge 1, Edge 2, or a Gerber Edge FX. And small text will look much better when you're printing at smaller sizes, such as something less than 20 points or 15 points or 10 points or maybe let's say 0.2 inches or 0.15 inches or 0.1 inch. 
Um, and instead of getting what I call sort of a inconsistent printed results, if you use a regular Gerber vector font, you can use small text and get much better looking uh, text on a small basis when you print to your edge. So to use small text, you just go over here to your text entry toolbar, you click on it and hold it down, so you it reveals your text toolbar, your text flyout, and then you click on the third tool, which is your small text dialog box. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. And then you click to locate where you would like your small text to be, and it brings up a very basic dialog box. So you have your justification, and then if you click on this letter A, you can select your font and some basic font properties. So let's say, for example, I want to use Baskerville Old Face and I can choose regular or there might be italic or bold in, in that list for this particular font it's just regular and you can choose your point size so here if I want to make this to be 8 point text I'll make it 8 point click on OK and then I'll type in A B C D E F G now when I click on OK to go into Composer to show that you see I'm just gonna zoom in on this small text you see that it shows your text in a filled mode so this is in show filled and this is in wireframe because it is true type or open type text it actually always shows in a filled or a non wireframe mode because it is true type text when I go to print this very small text out to my Gerber edge and again whether it's an edge 1 or an edge 2 or an edge FX uh, let's say that I'm printing at the standard 300 dots per inch when I print this 8 point text using the small text feature it's going to look more consistent and much more legible than if I were to take a similar Gerber vector based font and try to print print it at a similar small size so that's small text another feature that we've added uh, in Omega 3 and it's also of course in Omega 4 is that your connected fonts such as uh, commercial script connect automatically so I'll go into the text entry dialog box and choose a connected font And I type in G E R B E R and then scientific for a second line. So you notice down here under font, when using connected fonts, you can either connect manually using the old close characters, or you can connect automatically, or you can also optionally, a third option is to automatically close the characters but not join them together. The one that makes the most sense is to connect automatically. So I click on connect automatically, I click on composer you notice that all of my characters are closed and connected automatically. Another thing just to show real quick is that we now have implemented the change case feature in the text dialog box. So if I go to my regular pointer again and I double click on this text, I can highlight it with my cursor and then go over here to change case and I can make it all uppercase lowercase title case or toggle case so in this in this case get it in this case I'll make it title case and then another thing that you can always you could always do is you can also spell check so you see that it says C H N A G E well I can make sure that I have the proper spelling for that as well now it's all upper and lower case as it properly should be in terms of change case as well, we do also have change case using text on the work surface. So if I go to text on the work surface and I highlight my text and then go to the text menu, you can also change your case right here. So again, you have lowercase, uppercase, title case, and toggle case. So if I want to make it all lowercase, it's all lowercase now. Another thing, another new feature that we've added is that uh, you were not previously able to use spacing if you converted a true type font for use in Gerber Omega as a Gerber font. And you can now use spacing uh, when you convert a true type font into a Gerber font. So here's a font which is, let's double click on it and take a look, Algerian, which is converted from true type into a Gerber font. And right here in text on the work surface, if I go to my text on the work surface tool, put my cursor in the middle of this text and then go up to my text or character spacing, you notice that I can now click and drag, change the spacing even though this was a true type font converted into a Gerber font. This tool here is different from kerning in that I'm changing the spacing for the entire line of text 
as opposed to just an individual character pair. So if I want to make the entire line of text to be wider or narrower, I do that with this spacing tool. If I want to change the spacing between the, the P and the A here, I can go to text on the work surface, text on the work surface, click between those two and use the less than key just to bring that in a little bit tighter. There we go. Another important feature that's in Omega 3.0 and Omega 4.0 is that you have much better retention of colors that you assign when you assign it to text. So for example, in this example here, you see colors in the word colors are one, two, three, four, five, six different spot colors assigned to that one word colors. When I double click on this with my regular pointer, you notice that I actually have these change symbols between each of the colors. And when you look down here, as I move my cursor through the text, you notice that my colors actually change as I go through the text. So color is now an attribute of text similar to height or font or slant, which is why you see those change symbols. So I can go through here and I can put my cursor between the, the T and the A and go down here to a new button which is called color. And I can click on it and I can bring up my fill dialog box right from text entry. So now I can change it from intense blue to light purple from this point forward and you notice that my change symbol went into my text and now when I generate my text and look at it in composer between the T and the A it now changed from that intense blue into light purple and because it's an attribute just like font or slant or what have you if I change uh, any of my text attributes my colors will remain the same so I'll change it from Clarendon bold to Clarendon medium for example I regenerate it and my colors stay put. So this can save you a lot of time going back and forth and reassigning colors as you look at different text scenarios or change your text spacing or whatever you might be doing. Here's another feature that uh, can also save you some time again and this is copy and paste. Uh, you can actually copy text from uh, other Windows applications and paste it into Composer. So let me just delete this and what I'll do is switch over here to some basic text that I entered into Notepad. So you see just a couple different names and what I'm going to do is just highlight this text and then I'm going to go to edit and copy. So I copy, I'm copy. i copying it out of Notepad or it might be Word for Windows or it could even be a web page or something like that. And now I'm just going to get back here to Composer so I'll hit this little down button. And now I can go to either text on the work surface or uh, my text entry dialog box. If I click on it and then I click it over here, when I do my paste now, if I go to edit and paste, what it's going to do is going to paste the text that I copied from Notepad and it's going to use the font that I had selected, the text tool. So because I had Algerian chosen up here, it all came in as the font Algerian. The same thing holds true if I go to my text dialog box. So if I click, I'm going to go control V on the keyboard or I could also right click and just go to paste. And it pastes it in there and it's all going to use Gil KO as my font. And there it is. And finally, just as sort of a recap, just wanted to make sure that you're all aware that we do have a true type font converter. What the true type font converter allows you to do is to take any true type or open type font that you have in your Windows system and basically turn it into a Gerber font so you can see it up here in the list and you can apply your spacing and uh, all the other Gerber text manipulation features that you may be familiar with. And to get to the true type font converter, it's in the Gerber Omega program group. You just go to start programs Gerber Omega and then look for true type font converter you just pick a font and uh, just click OK and it will insert that font into composer using the same name as what the true type font was so that's just another way that you can have access to uh, to uh, have consistency between your true type fonts and your Gerber fonts so that's it just a quick primer about uh, different text entry tips and tricks uh, I hope it was useful for you and I uh, hope you have a great day